Okay, in order to replace this valve, you only need three tools. Some adjustable pliers in order to take off the uh, water hose clamp. A T25 Torx bit. And a flat tip screwdriver. Uh, this is just a bit for a drill, but um, I use this to pry off the pin. And this is the part number for the part I replaced. So I had a little trouble finding this valve. I went to AutoZone, they gave me the wrong one first. Then they found this number, which is the actual valve that I purchased and it actually works. Okay, this is the uh, error message that you'll get if valve A went bad. Uh, sometimes it takes a little while. There it is, transmission fault service now. I actually took my car to a transmission company they told me it is not the transmission and it's only this valve A. Okay, so today I'm re replacing the um, A valve on the uh, Ford Escape, 2015 Ford Escape, with a 2.5 liter engine. As you can see, it sits right back there behind the battery box. It's actually screwed in to the battery box right there. And that's a T25 Torx screw. The other hole is not a screw at all, it's just a plastic part. So I'm going to proceed to unscrew that screw, disconnect the hoses, but first I got to open up the radiator cap to release any pressure that's in there. Okay, after I unscrewed that one Torx screw, it actually came out really easy. I disconnected the cable that's connected to it and it actually pulls forward. So that should make it easy to disconnect these hoses. Okay, as you can see, I got the front hose disconnected. I actually had to move the cable or the uh, hose clamp down because it was stabbing my hand as I was trying to get some grip on it. But after I moved it down, I was able to grip it, twist it and pull it out. It took a few twists, but got it out. Now I gotta work on that back one back there. I don't know if you can see this, but there's a pin right behind yeah you see where my screwdriver bit is that pin holds this connector in place so you gotta pry up on it I'm actually just using a little screwdriver bit to pry up and you gotta be careful not to drop that pin in the engine compartment but this is what I'm using it's just a screwdriver bit with a flat tip and a Phillips on the other side the flat tip is what I used to wedge underneath that pin and pry up And once you've gotten that pin out, it makes it easy to just pop this away from that connector. And if you're looking, you can see the hoses are actually pretty dry. I let the car cool overnight, and then I opened up the coolant cap, and there's no pressure in the system right now, so nothing, um, there was no pressure behind it, so nothing came uh, squirting out when I disconnected the hoses. Okay, as you can see, I put the connector back into that female piece and slid the pin back in and it snapped in really easily. Now I just got to align this little black part with the hole back there and pop it in place and then once that's in place I I could screw in the uh, the Torx screw that was holding it. I won't be able to do this with one hand. Okay. There it's in. Now I just gotta line that with the screw hole. Screw it in and we're done. Well, actually, put on the front hose as well. And there we go. Looks just like the old one. Except it got rid of that error message.